You know, in my mind, I see that the more confident and persuaded you are in who you are in Him, that conditions your physical mind, your, your worldly mind, to be receptive to His input so you end up making decisions fueled by who He is in you rather than reactionary to what's going on around you. Are you with me? So before you do anything, you go in the grocery store, you go deal with the people in your household, you go to work, you go to the doctor, anything, you remind yourself, this is who I am. This is the situation I'm going into, but it's temporary. And I'm not just white-knuckling it until I get through this situation, right? Holding on real tight to that eternal reality so that I can just barely skate through this one. You got to hold on. Hold on to who you are in Christ. Embrace it. Put on the new man in Christ. And I love this example you have uh, in Daniel, which I have a, a passage. We'll put it up in just a second here. But in Daniel, you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they are overseeing at some leadership aspects of Babylon for King Nebuchadnezzar. Most of us know the story, and you probably even know this particular passage, but I love it because it gives an example of our attitude. Now, these guys were under a king that would kill people if you didn't bow down and worship a statue of this king. Think about that. Like, that actually happened. This knucklehead has a statue made of gold of himself, thinks that he's a god. He's obviously some type of demonically influenced, huh? Selfie. selfie, yeah, like that's the original selfie, King Nebuchadnezzar statue of himself. Right? <laughs> and he's, can you imagine, I mean, imagine this guy standing there looking at this statue of himself in gold and killing people if they don't bow down to it. Like that happened. It's a reality. And there are other people running things for this guy because he's got a lot of power. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were three Hebrew children or men. And they were brought in. And this is basically what happens here. I, I love this story. So this is Daniel 3.16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. They're like, we know who we are. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us and he will deliver us. I love that. Just so you know, he's able to and he will. Like, do you see God as that in your life? He's able to. Like, like most, like every Christian say God is able to whatever, but will he? Absolutely. This must be our attitude, not just facing this virus, because there are things that might get worse. There are things that might happen that might be way worse. And indeed, they are in a lot of areas. I mean, can you think about what it's like to live in North Korea right now, China, or even just a poverty-stricken area, you know, and the mentality that those people need to have? If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us and he will deliver us from you, king. I see it. I see the statue. I see the dead bodies. I can smell their flesh burning in that fire. They're standing right next to the fire that people are being thrown into. But even if he does not... Now, is that them wondering... They just stood before the guy who's killing people and said, we're not bowing. Our God, he can and he will deliver us. A lot of people look at this as a statement of uncertainty. But I say they're doubling down. It's like, just so you know, even if he doesn't, but he can and he will, he will but just so you know, in our hearts and in our minds, even, even, if he w even if he wouldn't, we still ain't worshiping you. Like that must be our attitude toward the Lord himself in, in the face of anything that comes against us in this world or even that you just go into in this world. They knew who they were. They knew who God was and they knew who they were. There was a connection deeper and greater than anything that they were facing, and they were facing the end of their lives. 
and you know eventually they were thrown in and delivered. But I love this. Even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Now, how do you get this type of surety? How do you get this kind of hope? How do you get this kind of confidence? It's not in anything that you do. It's in everything that he's done. And that's what we, that's, I, I think, you know, it's like it should be the easiest thing to understand, but I think a lot of people don't grasp it, that your faith is not something that you build up. It's, you put it in him. You put it in who he is. You stand and you behold the Father. You behold Jesus. Looking at Jesus and what he's done for us, and that should develop such a persuasion within you of who he is and how he feels about you. So how do you get this type of attitude? How do you get this type of courage and strength and inner, inner dependence on the Lord? 